Fourier analysis. In this exercise, we'll look at the Fourier analysis setup. This project consists of two schematics, a modulator and an amplifier. You will construct the top sheet, supply the input sources, and then analyze the results with a Fourier analysis. Again, you will find the starting design files on the eLearn page. And once you do that, you'll be able to do a file open, go to the desktop under the folder you've saved, and there's actually two projects, so uh, make sure that you select the Amplified Modulator project file. We'll get to the other one in just a little bit. Now that we have that project open, we're going to create a brand new schematic. This will be our top level schematic. Right click on the project and then choose Add New to Project Schematic. Now we're going to add two voltage um, sources. We go to the Libraries panel and we're going to choose the Simulation Sources. And then if you scroll down, there's a VSIN. We want a couple of those. So click the Place button and then just place two of those on your schematic. Double click on the first one and give it a new designator of V Carrier. And then go to the bottom right corner under Models. We're going to edit the parameters for the simulation model. So click on the Parameters tab once you're there. We want an offset of 5 millivolts an amplitude of 10 millivolts, and a frequency of 200 kilohertz. We're going to, in a similar fashion, edit the second one. Designator is V-Signal. We're going to edit its simulation model as well. Click on Parameters. We want an amplitude of 8 and a frequency of 5K. Right-click on the schematic sheet and save it as Amplified Modulator. You notice that there are two schematics in this project, amplifier and modulator, and these are lower level schematics that we're going to instantiate into this top level that we just created. And we can do that automatically with the command design create sheet symbol from sheet. When we do that, there's a pop up that identifies the existing schematic. So if we start with amplifier, click OK, you'll see we get this green sheet symbol created which then can easily be modified if you want to change the, for example, the, um, the size of the border as well as the positioning of the uh, sheet entries. Let's do the same thing for the second schematic. Design, create sheet symbol from sheet. Choose modulator this time. We can change the position of the sheet entries. Give us it a little more room, make it look a little prettier. And the other cool thing is we can Put these two blocks together and then uh, pull them away and that will automatically add in a wire. If you find that behavior is not working for you, hold the control key down. Now I'm just going to manipulate this a little bit here to make it look pretty. Add some additional wires. Place wire is the command. We're just going to connect the V carrier to our source and then similarly V signal to our the signal source. Add a couple of grounds by going to the toolbar, choosing the ground symbol, attaching those to the negative leg of our signal generators, and also adding a wire as our output. We also want to place some nets, which we can choose with the place net label command. One of them is OUT. Hit the tab key to change the value, and then we're going to have another signal called the carrier. And another one, the signal. And you notice if you're not familiar with Ultium Designer, the red X in the bottom left corner clearly indicates what the signals attached to, in this case, the lower level. So now we have our schematic uh, done. Let's do a file save all. Now we're going to go to our simulation analysis dialog by clicking on the icon in the toolbar, that middle one. And then we want to check the transient analysis, make sure that's enabled. And with that enabled, we're going to make sure we have a few things set here. Um, use transient defaults for one. Default cycles display, make sure that's set to five. This displays the specified number of period cycles. Make sure the default points per cycle is set to 50. This is equivalent to the transient step time it controls 
uh, the data sampling that will be shown in the uh, final waveform. Click the uh, set defaults button to show the values that will be used for simulation, which is located right here. And we also want to make sure that the enable Fourier, since we're going to do a Fourier analysis, make sure that is enabled. Now click the set defaults button. This will calculate and update the values of the grayed out parameters. For example, the Fourier parameters have been updated and the Fourier fundamental frequency is correctly set at 5 kilohertz. The use transient defaults does not need to be enabled to update the value using the set defaults button. If the use transient defaults is enabled, the calculated values are used regardless if the set default is clicked or not. Now, since we're using 5 kilohertz as the fundamental frequency, this will not show the 200 kilohertz frequency in the final waveform. So it'll be necessary to change the number of harmonics. So let's do that. Uncheck the use transient default. Since we've already clicked the set defaults button, the values we need should already been updated. Change the Fourier number of harmonics to 50. Click OK to close the dialog. And now we run the simulation. We do that from the simulation toolbar, that first icon. And here's the transient analysis. It looks very pretty. We can see here as it's doing this, um, the V signal input at the very bottom, the sine wave, the V carrier, and then the modulated output, which has those two combined in the very top. Now you'll notice there's a second tab of the Fourier analysis, which contains uh, for V signal, the 5 kilohertz band right here, uh, the V carrier, which has got the 200 kilohertz, and then we have the output shown below here, which again has the 200 kilohertz, and then the sidebands, and then the sidebands with the subsequent harmonics shown here. There's also a simulation file that's generated, which gives precise information on all the harmonics. So now let's do a fast Fourier transform. Let's go to Tools, Document Options, and change the FFT length to 512. Without adjusting this value, the displayed range will not include the upper 200K frequency. Next, select Chart, Create FFT Chart. This creates a new tab and shows the frequency harmonics generated from the plotted waves. I'm going to close this project, and we're going to open up a file, just for fun, to rebuild the square wave from its harmonics. So open up sign to square project and then there's a single schematic there which as you can see two sources one is a simple square wave generator as a reference to compare with and then on the right is the sign to square wave generator when a Fourier analysis is performed the general sim file contains all the harmonic components for the input wave signal taking the odd harmonics these can be used to recreate the wave the sign parameters for a voltage source you require offset amplitude, frequency, delay, damping, and phase. But if we set the correct values, we'll get to very close approximation. So let's try it out. All we need to do here, and you can follow along, is to run the simulation. So click on the simulation toolbar icon, and there we have it. So on the bottom is the V pulse output, the reference, which has a period of um, 20 milliseconds and then the Fourier transformer output shown here. And then when we zoom in, you can see the uh, effects in the corners of the slight uh, mismatch in the summation of the sine waves, but it's a pretty darn good approximation. If we go back to our schematic and do a modification to our simulation parameters, so go back to transient analysis. And if we choose a transient max step size, of 10 microseconds and then rerun the simulation you get an even cooler um, approximation to the square wave uh, clearly showing the effects of the build of the multiple sine waves.